Hi, my name is Brian and today I'm going to be making some temporary counters until I can get around to building cabinets. So I uh, bought this house about 18 months ago. I'm in the middle of a complete renovation. Um, really, this is more rebuilding. So um, my kitchen is just kind of camping kitchen, really. I, I have a stove, have a dishwasher, um, have some basic comforts of life. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is I'm really sick of living on um, what I call picnic tables, these little white folding tables. So I'm going to build a plywood countertop with a single shelf and um, it's really very rudimentary, but that's, that's what today's video is. That's what today's project is. I'll be using a couple of uh, tools that are not on camera and then I'm probably not going to move the camera to see. One of them is a Hitachi chop saw that's, or miter saw that's mounted on a DeWalt folding base. Great product. Um, and then I'm also going to be testing a true track, uh, track saw uh, from Insight Toolworks that has a DeWalt skill saw mounted to it. Um, I do have a separate video on that. I did the assembly, so I will shoot a video of the first couple cuts with it. But other than that, thanks for watching and um, if you are interested in more house type stuff, I'm setting up a blog at comfy.house. That's H-T-T-P comfy.house. And house is a new top level domain. Um, so you can check the blog out. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching my video. Be sure to like my video so you can keep up with my other videos as I release them. Okay, so first things first, I need to measure the space. Um, my counter depth is actually 26 inches, standard counter depth, and my run, or the length of my counter, and um, this is a little difficult to do on camera, so it just works out to, you know, hair over 71 inches, so I'm going to use 71 inches for the length of my countertop. Now, height-wise, I want my counter to be 36 inches high. I'm going to actually match off my stove. And that means my legs are 35 and a half inches tall. And I'm writing all this down on a piece of paper that I actually use to kind of plan things out. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm actually also going to leave a three inch overhang in the front and a two inch overhang in the back. I'm going to do a very, very simple frame. Um, these will end up being recycled as workbenches at some other future point. Um, for material, I'm using some number two southern yellow pine, and then I have also bought some sheets of plywood. Um, one of the great mysteries in life is why is pine plywood being manufactured in China and shipped to the United States? How is it cheaper to make the plywood there and ship it here? Um, plywood is a very, very automated manufacturing process. It's almost all computerized and, and automated. I just don't understand why a lumber company can't afford to pay four or five people to, to run one of those lines. That's crazy. But best quality plywood that Home Depot has um, is this three quarter inch, um, I forget what crappy ass marketing name they gave to it, but it's just really nice, clean, clear plywood. Um, it actually rivals Birch for, ply for uh, its quality. It's got lots of layers. Uh, we'll see when we cut into it if it's worth a darn. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to cut my uh, upper frame and then I'm going to bring it in and start to assemble it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut all the pieces I need. And now what I'm going to do is start assembling my horizontal frames. And once I have my horizontal frames together, I will attach the legs. And then I will um, cut some plywood to fit in there and cut some plywood to go on the top, attach that. And then I'll have this temporary countertop slash workbench completed. So first step is to put this together. I'm using Spax screws. They're a little bit higher quality screws and they work great for me. All right, so uh, Ready to go, I am going to assemble the um, horizontal frames. So I'm using my DeWalt impact driver and then I'm using some Spax 3 inch screws. I seriously doubt I have enough to complete the project, so we'll see how far I get before I have to go to Home Depot and buy a couple boxes.
tell you what, these DeWalt lithium batteries just keep going and going and going. The Energizer Bunny doesn't have nothing on them. So now what I'm going to do is start putting together the uh, legs and build frame. And um, now one of the things that you can't see on camera, because I'm not going to move the camera around the corner, is I um, set my saw and then I make all the identical cuts. So you can see there's a pile of legs behind me and then there's some legs over here. So I set the saw to 35 and a half inches, set the stop, and then I cut all the legs for the whole project. Um, all right, so uh, I think this is gonna be the lower shelf. Now I'm gonna do these a little differently. I'm only gonna put one screw in them initially. Well, maybe. Maybe saying to yourself, hey, you're not going to be able to get that stuff uh, square. And that's where I'm going to use the second one to help. Doesn't have to be in any specific spot. It just has to be there to hold it, hold it level for me. I'll switch over to Torx and get to enjoy the benefit of not having to push it's quite so hard on the, the driver to get these things in. Now the only disadvantage is the Torx have a tendency to wobble so um, then I just don't engage as deep and it's really easy for them to fall over when you're trying to get them started. So at this point, I need to take a break and go to Home Depot and buy a few boxes of screws so I don't run out again. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and stand this up and give you a little preview of what we're looking at. So once I attach that second frame down below, it will reinforce it and then I will get that uh, uh, I'll get the plywood down there. I'll cut the piece for the top. This, the lower shelf is going to be shorter. I could, uh, you know, some people would have put a third set of legs in here. You know, this is only gonna hold my dishes and my small appliances. I promise this is more than strong enough. Um, put that in my recycle bin. So you can see that it very easily holds me and I weigh, you know, a couple hundred pounds. So you know, this is very, very sturdy. It's not gonna have a problem with dishes and pots and boxes of food and small appliances. And that's all that's gonna go on it. Um, it's gonna make a fantastic workbench in my garage at a later point in time. So I, uh, had a, I got a little further yesterday with my temporary countertop slash workbench um, than I had anticipated. 
Um, I had some technical difficulties on my computer, and so while I was waiting for those to sort themselves out, um, I went ahead and finished this bench. So I need to build four more of them, so I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, filming uh, the progress on those. Um, and as before, it starts with measuring how long I need them to be, and then calculating what the different segment sizes are. Um, so I also had an opportunity to use my uh, TrueTrack track saw. Works pretty good. It's, a, it's actually a really good solution. Uh, much better than doing it by hand. Um, I do need to buy the extension uh, so that I can do a full eight foot rip, um, but it, you know, the 57 inch track validates what I wanna be able to do with it. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start cutting some pieces and then I will um, uh, film the assembly process. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have cut all of the pieces that I need. So I have the um, horizontal frames up here on top of this workbench slash counter and I have the legs down there in a pile. I think you can actually see it on camera. So uh, anyway, the next step is for me to assemble these and obviously my kitchen's a little bit cramped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the camera and I'm gonna assemble them over by the plywood and uh, I'll actually film the assembly. Uh, I'm only gonna show assembling one because quite frankly, they're all identical. They're just different sizes. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my DeWalt impact driver. It's part of their Max XR series of tools. I've just put a fresh battery in it and I suspect I will probably um, assemble this whole project with just this one battery. Amazing, amazing tools, very, very well designed. Um, so I've got a new uh, tool that I'm bringing in. Um, it's just a DeWalt organizer. It's about $21 at Home Depot and I have put my screws in it. One of the things I really like is I can pull the box of screws out and I use it to uh, hold my coke, keep it, it just appears to be just the right size to keep it from tipping over. So I've got all of the framing components that I need for um, one side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put together the, um, the two horizontal frames and then I will join them. And um, at that point, I just have to put the top on. So these and three of these. And oh yeah, that's what I did differently. So uh, one of the fun things is this is my uh, free 25 foot tape measure from Harbor Freight. Um, I went there and bought some uh, other things today. So this is 55 inches. So I'll put a mark at 27 and a half on both boards. You know, tape measures don't tend to last very long. I, I guess I could be nicer to them, but you know, it just is what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-start all of my screws and this makes it uh, less work to um, attach them to the boards. Uh, just simply line these up and put them together. And I'll still, you know, this is just like when you're building a wall before you stand it up. So I'll still go ahead and stand, uh, put my foot on this to keep it um, flush on the concrete. And I'm using my gloves as just sort of a makeshift knee pad. Makes it a little more comfortable. All right, so at this point, I just need to screw these in and this frame is together.
Now I'm not going to finish that one, and there is a reason for it. I'll come back and finish it in a second. My uh, center brace on here are a fraction of an inch too short, maybe an eighth, maybe a sixteenth. So I'm putting them in the center, and um, I'll go ahead and draw it in, and it just doesn't matter. It'll still work the same. Might actually make it stronger being under tension. So, first things first, just put do boards down. Don't pay attention to where they're at. Second part, go ahead and just uh, set these. I think I actually want to use this one as my top one. Sometimes in woodworking, you uh, have just kind of an instinct about which boards are good and which ones aren't as good. And I think that top frame is a little sturdier. So first things first, I'm going to just line this up and put one screw in. Same thing over here. this pine is harder than other pieces so no big deal all right so that piece is in and wow this one's really torqued so we're gonna do this differently that one's really torqued so it'll have to be last so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my speed square here to get my leg perpendicular. And then I'll put a second screw in. Alright, so that piece is in. Now I did put together what's called a story stick, which just helps me figure out where 12 inches is very quickly. I normally attach um, the top and then I go back and do the middle, but because this one is a little wonky, um, I'm going to come back and do this a little differently. to show there's not really a, a right or a wrong way to do this. Okay, so that's in there and now what I'm going to do is flip it over and do the other side. You want that lower section doesn't look right, so I'll double check that here in a minute. Floor in this little house. I think once you get some weight on it, it just isn't going to matter. And if it turns out to be a problem, I'll screw something to one of the legs and fix it. So anyway, I'm going to uh, pause the recording at this point so I can go ahead and assemble the other uh, three frames that are just like this. You guys don't need to see that. And then I will uh, cut the panels and put those on. Okay, folks, so I'm finishing putting together the fourth um, 
countertop slash workbench. Um, and I did not make it all the way through on one battery. I got down to one bar. I don't like to run my batteries dead because I think it's bad for them. So I went ahead and swapped it out. Um, that was about 40 screws ago. So I'm putting the last two legs on the largest of the tables that I'm building. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this and let you guys watch. So what I like to do is, you know, I've done, this has evolved a little bit as I've done these. So I just kind of line it up, eyeball it. Set that there. Start that one. Repeat the process on this side. And again, I'll just go ahead and set this before I line it up. first screw anchors it, the uh, second screw will lock it in once I line it up. So I just double check my alignment. For kicks and giggles I'll go ahead and put the other screw in. I'm using uh, SPAC screws. They're about 10 cents a piece. Eh, nah, that can't be right. They gotta be more than that because they're $11 a box and a box has 72. <clears throat> so the tag at Home Depot thinks they're 10 cents a piece. I know better. So this is good enough. Probably going to end up making leg levelers, and that's okay. Um, we can go back in the box. Yeah, when those are a tad high, but you know what? Again, it's just a bench. I don't care. I'm not making fine furniture. Um, that's another project for another day. <clears throat> this is what I affectionately refer to as, it'll be fine furniture. Um, so at this point, I've got my frames put together and what I need to do now is I need to start to actually um, cut my plywood. So here we go. Okay, so at this point I have used my track saw to cut all the pieces that go on the, the top of the, of the benches and the bottom. And now I need to attach them. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a polyurethane adhesive. So this is PL510, it's about $3.50 a tube. Um, there are other kinds of glue, you could use screws, but then it leaves screw holes in the top of the bench. Uh, this is a clean solution, um, it's cheap, it's quick and it, it will work just fine. And it's really simple to line it up. You just pick which side's going to be flush and then just kind of even it out on both sides. Not real critical and then it's time for some clamps. If you don't have clamps like this you could use buckets. Um, anything heavy enough to push down on it and help the glue set.
So at this point, I will uh, let the glue clear, cure overnight, and uh, then it'll be time to finish them. That'll be a separate video.